Hey there. Excellent. So data quality or data quantity. Um, I have 15 minutes to talk about it. So I will spend six, seven minutes convincing you that data quant uh, quality is more important. And then I'm going to spend seven minutes convincing you that data quantity is more important. So let's see which one, uh, which side actually wins. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, you know, I'm Czech. I live in San Francisco. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I built, uh, sold multiple companies. When I was a little younger, I started a company named uh, NetBeans. If you develop in Java, you might have heard of NetBeans. And uh, I sold that one to Sun Microsystems. And I sold one company to HP, now Oracle. So, so and, and Sun, uh, NetBeans is now part of Oracle. So, um, and I'm working on good data. Um, what we do is we help companies to collect, analyze, visualize, understand data, but also build some predictive and, and recommendations. And it's a platform that's being used by uh, almost a million users today. So let's talk about data quality and, and data quantity. So first, you know, again, some people will tell you that uh, you need to focus on quanti quality over quantity. Uh, why is that? So I have four reasons why. The first one is it's too expensive still to host and manage and, and store all of the data. Even in the life of Hadoop and all of the technologies that makes data storage and analytics cheaper, it's still expensive. And believe me, I'm spending you know, tens of millions of dollars every year storing good data uh, in our private cloud. Uh, but so some people would actually say that storing less data is beneficial because you spend less money. The second one is actually interesting. It apparently takes more time to process if you have too much data. It takes too much time. And uh, I, I agree. If you use some um, desktop tool, if you use some tools on your notebook and so on, if, even if you use tools that are processing you know, a large uh, number of, of terabytes of data, it may take too much time if you do it manually. And uh, so that's why many companies are cutting down on volumes of data. Uh, they are essentially uh, looking for a subset of data that are only, uh, only relevant. This is, this is my favorite one. For many years, um, my industry talks about data lakes. We talk about the fact that if you put all of the data in one place, you will end up with this wonderful place called Data Lake, and that's where all of your data is, and you can make all of the you know, wonderful uh, correlations and predictions and so on. The problem is if you don't have enough metadata about the data, if you don't know where it came from, what it means, how is it related, um, you know, when was it created, and so on, you actually end up with what we call data swamp you end up with a large volume of data that's essentially not usable. And that's where most of the companies are, to do the, uh, are today. If you speak to any enterprise large company, they will tell you that the data is essentially a data swamp. And the last one, integration. Uh, it's, you know, we usually say that 80% of the time processing data is actually spent in integration. If you have many, many different data sources, if you use data from public and private and, and applications and other data sources, it's, a, it's very time consuming and expensive. And that's why, again, um, some people would actually recommend that uh, having you know, fewer data sources and look at some subset of data is more beneficial. So that was, the, that was the argument why data quality is more important than data quality, uh, quant quantity. Um, but I actually think it's uh, with machine learning and uh, AI and so on, it's actually changing. So let's take a look at four reasons why you should keep and store as much data as possible. So let's focus on quantity over quality. Um, so the first argument is more data usually beats better algorithms. It's a big debate in the industry. Um, there was someone at Google who said that they don't have better algorithms, they just have more data. And uh, that's, you know, and I can actually, I can point to a number of examples where a, a very basic algorithm 
with more data will get to better results that can predict future better because it's just, uh, it's just working with uh, large uh, data volumes. And um, so sometimes we try to um, build these algorithms, predictive algorithms that are too sensitive because they are working on too small data sets and they get, uh, they get wrong outcomes. And it's, it may be better to use some simple algorithm uh, but have more access to more data. Um, there's, there's, you know, this, is, this is a topic that um, is a famous Netflix, uh, Netflix competition where Netflix will give you um, access to their data and if you can figure out some prediction from that data, the best team wins million dollars. The best teams typically enrich at additional data sets. It's not only about uh, the algorithm, it's all about adding more data, having access to more data. The second thing is more relevant data leads to better decisions. And uh, the focus here is on, on relevant. I'm spending a lot of time talking to my customers about what relevant data actually means. And, and you would be surprised. Most companies come to us and ask us for some, um, how would I call it, non-traditional data sets. They actually believe that if you are a large company with established competitors, you have to get access to non-traditional data sets. You have to have access to data that no one else has access to. And that's what we mean relevant data. We mean data that may not be obvious. Uh, for example, we are working on a project with a very large bank. Uh, we are um, helping to predict who's the next uh, potential client for the loan. And the data we actually are buying for them from uh, our antivirus company because the antivirus companies know what, uh, what uh, websites people visit because they actually check the, the traffic for antiviruses. So, so there's a lot of kind of data aggregation that can happen um, in, that, in that respect. So I would never expect that I can improve a marketing or loan processing for a bank by using data coming from uh, antivirus uh, tracking. But that's what we mean by more relevant data leads to better decisions. In machine learning, connected data is everything. Um, what is machine learning? If you think about it, machine learning is all about generalizing a sample of data. You get access to a sample of the data, you generalize it, you build a model that can generalize it, and that model will start to build predictions. So that logically means that more data I actually have, more uh, you know, better predictions I can make. And um, so it's always about the size of the, the, size of the sample. Um, we are working on a number of examples where um, you know, we are getting access to decades of data. We just finished a, a very large project with a, a retailer, and we look at their uh, uh, predictive maintenance, when will the next air conditioning break, when will the next uh, uh, light bulb break, and so on. And we were able to get access to 15 years of facility management data. So we took data for 15 years of you know, water leakage and, and air conditioning problems and so on. And it's amazing, amazing data sample. And at this moment, we are able to predict 92% what will happen in the retail. We can actually tell them, hey, if you don't fix this air conditioning, it will break soon. Or we can tell them, you know, what you're spending on, uh, on uh, upkeep of this, this store is too expensive because we have 15 years of, of data and we can predict how much they should be actually spending. The next one is, you know, more data is, is better if you have correct tools and, and teams. And that's one of the biggest problems today is that it's so difficult to hire uh, data scientists. It's so difficult to hire people who actually understand data, who know how to use the tools, who know how to actually build these predictive models. Um, there was an article in The Economist, uh, uh, I believe a year ago or maybe 18 months ago, and they called the AI people who actually, people who understand AI, they called them million dollar babies. And if you wonder why they are called million dollar babies, because that's how much money they make. They make million dollars. If you're a good uh, AI scientist, you know, that's a, this is how much money you can make. So I would actually encourage all of you is to look at this kind of this topic for two reasons. 
Um, one is, you know, can you actually have the best team for your data? Can you actually find the best uh, data scientists? Because without data scientists and data people who understand AI, neither quality or quantity doesn't really matter if you cannot build the right models. But you should also look at it as a, as a, as a next career choice. Um, there are multiple stories by McKenzie that tells us that the biggest barrier of AI will not be data, it will not be data quality, it will not be, it will not be anything else, it will just be the lack of people. We will not have enough skilled people understanding AI, people who actually can build these predictive models. And, and the reason why this is so, so difficult is that it's not, it's, you know, data predictive and machine learning, it's not just, it's not just science. It's almost an art. Understand what model will be most applicable to your problem. You know, you have, you have tons of data and, and you have to have the special skill and uh, kind of the sixth sense that will tell you, well, this model might be the most applicable to my problem. And then you test it, you validate it, and if not, that's not the case, you move on to another model and so on. But understanding, having that kind of you know, feel for it, that's really important. You know, some of my best data scientists can guess the model and no one knows how, how they actually know it, how they, how they come up with this idea that exactly you know, decision trees will be applicable to this model. So having the, the right people, having the people who have that kind of skill and building those skills, is really critical if you want to manage, manage your data. And in terms of tools, you know, for example, at Good Data, we help companies to scale their machine learning and, and, and AI. We help them to operationalize it, to, to build uh, systems that actually use AI for decision making, for back office, and so on. So tools are also absolutely important. So this is kind of my last slide. I have 48 s seconds left. So, so I hope that I convinced you that neither one is more important. You have to have data quality because that actually that can cut, help you cut costs, that can help you to save time. It leads to you know, more direct outcomes, if you, especially if you analyze your data manually, if you use kind of desktop tools and so on. But at the same time, as we are moving more and more to the world of AI and machine learning, it's really important to look at the data quantity and, and you know, get access to as much, as much data as possible. It's called data enrichment. We, you know, that's, that's one of the topics that I could spend another half an hour talking about. How do you actually get enough data with quality so that you can make the right decisions? Excellent. It's good to talk to you today. Thank you. Thanks.